Hi, welcome back. Today's lesson is on keypad interfacing. A keypad is just a bunch, a bunch of momentary contact switches. You know, you press the switch, it makes contact. You release it, it breaks contact. So the easy way to interface a keypad to a microcontroller is to use one input port bit per switch. So you have a switch on every input port, okay? And if you look over here, what happens is the switch is normally open. Okay, one side of the switch is connected to ground. The other side is connected through a pull-up resistor to an input port bit. Okay, so if that switch is open, I'm going to read a 1 on this pin right here. And if the switch is closed, then it's going to short this to ground, and I'll read a 0 on this bit. Okay, so it's pretty simple, nice, easy interface. But what if you have a lot of buttons? Well, you could use a lot of port bits, but remember, a microcontroller doesn't have a whole lot of port bits, and we're usually using them for other things. So um, if you think about a keyboard on your uh, um, PC, your personal computer, it has over 100 buttons on it. Okay, You wouldn't want to use 100 port bits for that. So there's, you know, th that's a simple way to do it, is what you see right here. But simple is not necessarily elegant and not necessarily efficient. So remember, if this job were simple, anybody could do it. And if anybody can do it, you make minimum wage doing it. So deal with the complication, and that's where you get the good paying job. So, some, some brilliant engineer, who's not me, came up with the idea of arranging the switches in a row and column matrix. So if you look at the way these are arranged right here, we'll see that these switches, uh, switches 1, 4, 7, and, and asterisk, those keys, are connected. They're all connected to column 0 on one side. Okay? And then keys 1, 2, and 3 are connected to row 0 on the other side. And we have pull-up resistors just so that uh, if everything is unconnected, the bits are going to read a 1. Don't worry too much about those. Okay, so what we have is every time you press a button, what it's doing is it's making a connection. By the way, there's no connections between the rows and columns. These are not junctions right here. So the only time you'll get a connection between a row and a column is if you press a key. So if I press the 3 key, what I'm doing is I'm making a connection between column 2 and row 0. Now, the problem is, that doesn't really do me any good, because no matter what, I'm always going to read 1s the way this is configured right here. So let's take a look at this and say, let's say I ground all the columns. I put all three columns to 0 right here. So what's going to happen is, if I have my rows connected to input bits on my port, I'm going to connect them to the 4 bits on port D. If my rows are connected to input bits, if I press the 1 key down, what's going to happen is it's going to ground since column 0 is grounded, it's going to bring that ground over to row 0. So I'll know, hey, the 1 key was pressed because that was grounded. Now the problem is, I don't really know that it was the 1 key. Because if the 2 key is pressed, it also makes a connection between ground and row 0. If the 3 key is pressed, it also makes a connection between ground and row 0. So this is kind of you know phase 2, but it doesn't really work very well. So I have to find a way to control my columns a little bit. And I can do that by connecting the columns to output ports. So these are going to be three output pins. And I can control whether these are ones or zeros. And remember, when you write a one to an output pin, it's effectively connecting the pin to VCC. And if you write a zero, it's effectively connecting the pin to ground. So if I write a zero to this bit right here, that's basically connecting column zero to ground. And now I can take a look at that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ground one column at a time. So if I write a 0 to this bit and write 1s to these two, I know that only column 0 will be grounded. Now, if I find a 0 in one of these rows, I'll, I'll know exactly which key it was that caused the, the 0. I'll know which key is being pressed. So let's take a look at this. If I read my four port bits, my four input port bits right here, and I have column 0 being grounded, if I read a 0 on this bit, I know that the 1 key must have been pressed. Because that's the only way that I would get a 0 here. It had to come this way. Okay? I know it wasn't the 4 key because this bit is a 1. I know it wasn't the 7 key because this bit is a 1. How do I know it wasn't the 2 key? Think about that. Pause the video if you need to and think about that. How do I know it wasn't the 2 key that was being pressed? Well, I know it wasn't the 2 key that was being pressed, because if the 2 key was pressed instead of the 1, I would be connecting 
a 1. This column is a 1 right here, so I'd still be reading a 1 here. The fact that I read a 0, and this is the only column that's grounded, tells me that it had to be in this column, and the fact that it's a 0 here pinpoints it down to this key right here. Okay, and again, I know it wasn't the 4 key because this bit right here is a 1 and not a 0. So you try one. Looking at this configuration right here, I have written a 0 to this bit, I've written 1s to these two bits, and when I read these ports, these port bits right here, I read a 0 there and three 1s there. So pause the video, think about that, and figure out which key is being pressed. Okay, I hope you came up with this. If you look at this, you'll see that since this is a zero right here, we know that it had to be in this row. The key press had to be in this row because this is the only one that's a zero. These three are ones. And we also know that since these two columns are ones, it couldn't have come from those two keys. It had to be this one. So the pound key, the number sign key, was the one being pressed. Okay, do another one. Pause the video, look at this, think about it, figure out which key is being pressed right now. Okay, if you look at this, you'll see that I've now grounded column one. So this is a zero, and I'm reading row zero, or excuse me, I'm reading row two, then that shows a zero on row two, it shows ones on the other three rows. So that tells me that this key right here, the eight key, must have been the one that was pressed. So what you're going to do is really you're going to let the software put a zero on one column at a time and then look at the rows. And anywhere you find a zero on a row, you know which key was pressed because only one column is grounded. So what my software is going to do is it's going to continuously in a loop. And you might think, wow, if I can only do one row at a time, isn't that, what if, what if, I, how, what if I miss a key press? Well, the fact is it's going to go through this. Remember I told you that a microcontroller is much, much faster than a human being? It will whip through this so many times, you can actually scan a keypad like this thousands and thousands of times, be faster than somebody can press a single key. Okay, talk about your uh, uh, keyboard on a, on a personal computer. Okay, a lot of typists can type many, many words per minute. Um, there's over a hundred keys on this keyboard. It uses the same type of an algorithm for scanning the keyboard. It's got them arranged in a row, row column matrix, and you know you can't type fast enough to make it go too fast to make it to make it miss a key. So what the software is going to do is let's start by I'm going to write a zero to column zero and write a one to these two columns. Then I'm going to scan the rows. And anywhere I see a zero, if row zero is a zero, I know this key was pressed. If row one is a zero, I know this key was pressed. If row two is a zero, I know this key was pressed. Okay, so I'm going to scan the rows one at a time by putting a zero on this column, ones on those two columns, and then I'm looking at just this column's worth of keys. Okay, then I'm going to stop that, and I'm going to put a one here, and a zero there, and a one here. So I'll ground column one, leave the other two columns high, and then I read my rows again, okay? If row zero is a zero, I know the two key was pressed. If row one is a zero, I know the five key was pressed, okay, etc. down to eight and zero. Okay, then I'm gonna put ones on these two columns, put a zero on this column, and I'm gonna scan my rows again, okay? If I get a zero on row zero, I know the three key was pressed. If I get a zero on row two, I know the nine key was pressed, okay? So you just repeat that process over and over again and it's not that hard to figure out which key is being pressed. You know which column you're grounding and you know which row comes up low. Okay, now the complete solution. Um, if you look at this right here, what happens is um, if, I have a, if I've written a one here, and it kind of depends on how the microcontroller is arranged, but in some microcontrollers a one is actually a dead short to VCC and a zero is a dead short to ground. Well, the problem is if I press two keys in the same row, then what might happen is I might get a short, a direct short from VCC to ground, and that's not good. That'll blow up your chip. Okay, that probably won't cause a puff of smoke to come out, but it will definitely damage the port bits, so that's not cool. So what we do is, over here, we put diodes on here. So what happens is if I write a 1, a 1 is a direct short to VCC, that will actually reverse bias this diode. So this point right here would be floating. It wouldn't be a, uh, connected to VCC and we would get a one, a safe one, through this pull-up resistor. So it's not a dead short to VCC, it's a 
it's a pull up going through a 10k resistor okay so the diodes just make it a little bit cleaner a little bit safer so there's your lesson on keypad interfacing i hope it pushed all the right buttons see you in class